Hello, welcome back to the lecture series on postcolonial writings. Today we will look into Ole Soinga's play with the strong breed. We will be dealing with the summary in this lecture today. The strong breed is a tragedy based on the tradition of E. Gangan, a Yoruba festival tradition in Nigeria in which a scapegoat of the village carries out the evil of the community and is exiled from the civilization. As I mentioned earlier, Bole Soinga belongs to this Yoruban tribe and all his works holds some sort of elements that are present in his culture. There is a tragedy that ends with an individual sacrifice for the sake of the communal benefit. The play is centered on the tradition of e a Yoruba festival tradition in which the scapegoat of the village carries out the evil of the community and is exiled from the civilization, as I mentioned in the beginning. A man named Iman, considered to be the carrier of all the evils of the village for the past one year, is tortured to death and hanged at midnight, heralding the new year, thus warding off all the evils for the future. This is what uh, the play in a nutshell. So this uh, play was published when the traditional Yoruba life was dominated by religion. The play deals with the theme in all its crude details, the ritual gaining universal significance from the symbolic values attributed to it by the playwright. Animal scapegoats were used frequently in the ritual, but human sacrifices too were not infrequent. Highlighting the significance of this ancient ritual, which is the medium for renewing the society by forming a bridge between the living and the dead. So Inga quotes, the Egan masquerade is an ancestral masquerade. It is one of the devices for reconciling society and individuals to the trauma of the death. The Egan continues the line between the living and the dead. Unquote. The ancestors were worshipped through Egangan, which is a festival of dead among the, among the Yoruba tribe. The Egangan is a masked figure. Uh, the Egangan is a dancer on one level, is simply an actor assuming a role, and on the another level, he identifies so closely with the spirit and actually speaks with a new voice when he leaves the world of drama and makes believe and enters a realm of spirit. In the state of possession, the Egan becomes the medium through whom the dead person will speak to the living members of the family. Now we look into the characters of the play. Major main character or, or protagonist is Iman, is a stranger in that village, and he mostly portrayed as uh, a godly figure. He is compared to Ogun, a god of Yoruba tribe and often compared to Jesus Christ by the Western critics. He is basically he is a teacher and a healer. Healer in the sense he used to give those traditional medicines to all those villagers who are sick. And he used to teach the children over there. So in that case he is considered as a teacher as well as a healer. And the uh, second major character is Sanma, Jaguna, the village leader's daughter. Then Sanma is an educated girl and she used to help Iman with his works in his hut. And uh, she is the only strong-willed character in this play, we should say, because she is realistic in nature. And she is against all the evil rituals that are happening in the nature. But of course, she doesn't hold that mental strength to fight against that. But at least uh, she has some sort of stability or consistency in the decisions that are being taken by her. Then the next character is Ifada. He is a homeless boy and an idiot often comes there. Uh, to Iman's hut. Often he gives him food as well as shelter and uh, finally at the end of the day he Iman sacrifices himself in order to rescue Ifada. I will, I will come to that later. And then there is a girl and uh, she too is sick. The girl is unnamed. 
she too is sick but uh, she uh, holds an effigy always in her hand and she believes that when this effigy is being burned she will also get better you know, like that then there is jaguna he is the village leader and the team leader of those people who comes to and prepare um uh, prepare or select the carriers of that particular carrier of that particular year in order to take away all this evil stuff then orog orog is jaguna's main attendant and there are a few attendants or stalwarts um among the villagers who used to help all these people then there is old man and uh, of course this play Uh, has a lot of flashback memories and um, it is uh, written in uh, with this flashback technique two three times the past and present got mixed up and eman's dead father comes so he is actually um he is unnamed we call him as an old man often comes and um, as flashes of memory then there is ome eman's wife she too comes as when you get um, uh, introduced to the flashbacks then there is the tutor and the priest these are the important characters of the play now we'll look into the summary of the play the strong breed is a self sacrificed shell story of eman who lives in a lives in a strange village and has to sacrifice his life in order to save the village sanma of course uh, he is uh, she is the helper but she secretly loves him and she tries to convince him to leave the village before the new year's festival begins at night because she knows what happens she being the daughter of jaguna she knows everything that is going to happen and she also knows that it is the strangers who are normally used as carriers to cleanse the village from its sins and also she knows the character of eman and ifada is taking rescue there so she afraid that he might take uh, the turn this time in order to uh, what help this person this ifada Sanma hates her village as she believes that it is quite evil. She doesn't agree with its cultural practices and rituals. She rebels against her father, Jaguna, in the play. Unfortunately, she lacks that moral strength to rebel against the whole community. She can't do it like that, but of course she is strong-willed. She doesn't change her opinion often. even um eman has uh, is appears to be strong willed at one point of time and he actually thinks that okay he won't act, um, subside to all these uh, superstitions or uh, he will never become a carrier but later he changes his mind so we can say that sanma is the only strong willed character in the play sanma is mentally isolated from the rest of the village and wants to leave uh, these evil practices she works for eman in his hut which is used as a staff room as well as a clinic as i told you earlier he used to give traditional medicines to all those people around sanma doesn't understand why eman does not want to leave the village often she asks why do you want to stay here please stay away it is uh, being dangerous for you to be here she vents her anger out on ifada a crippled boy as she fe- feels that it is ifada who is distracting eman's attention from her Eman belongs to the strong breeds that are used as carriers the play is marked with the flashbacks between this Eman's past and present where he sees images of his father and his dead wife Omi those um, from that we'll understand who actually Eman is Eman's father uh, was once playing the hereditary role as a carrier of his village who had to ride a dwarf boat representing the sins of the community it was only seldom that such dwarf boats returned safe bringing the surviving carrier back eman refused to take over the hereditary role from his father his father's words reverberate in his ears ours is a strong breed my son i hoped you would follow me stay longer and you will answer the urge of your uh, blood but eman actually left the village for 12 years and traveled many places uh, he uh, says uh, he said his father that he'll never come back and then he leaves but at the same when he says that he'll never come back uh, father says like this i quote son it is not the mouth of the boaster that says he belongs to the strong breed the tongue that is red with pain and black with sorrow and uh, the father says that okay i will hope that you will understand your um, um 
job to sacrifice yourself and you will come back at some point of your life that that is what the father says to iman this actually kind of like reverberate in his ears all these years uh, all all these years even though he was traveling and he was away from the village and now he is again away from he uh, once came back and married ome and then he again after ome's death he again left the village and uh, settled in another place that is why he is here now but still this is haunting him Iman's father was once playing the hereditary role, um, role as I told you and finally he ended up as a carrier the old man's words mean that Iman will certainly fulfill his duty among a community that is not his the metaphor used by the old man also reveals that Iman cannot escape his destiny as a, ca- a carrier in one way or the other his final end is to be a carrier so inga focuses on this aspect of the destiny of the individual who is doomed to meet it in order to epitomize that inevitability of destiny he firstly contrasts iman's two lives in his home village and in his new village with a new location and another time again iman turns out to be a carrier ome who was his childhood sweetheart has waited for iman to come back all those years while living in his father's homestead that is 12 years of exile and iman has left this village soon after his circumcision and told ome to wait for him she he said that okay he'll definitely come back but he won't be doing the job he said his father that he won't be doing the job of this carrier again ome died during childbirth as all the females in the lines of the strong breed do and iman left his village again in the new village of course he is a stranger he is a teacher and a healer but still he is a stranger iman tries to rehabilitate ifada who is a young boy who suffers from an incurable disease as in uh, he appears to be mentally unstable so people used to ward him away ifada is a stranger and the villagers attempt to use him as a carrier but iman chooses to take his place instead so this is what actually exactly uh, this sanma was afraid of in the beginning of the play that's why she wanted him to go back to his village at any cost at that day itself since it is the new year eve there is also a sick girl who symbolizes evil who refuses to go to iman's clinic for healing though it is free she carries around an effigy that she is going to sacrifice during the festival so that she can be cured she is an insensitive person as she uses ifada as suits her iman flees from the village elders as he is going to be sacrificed and he has to be chased around the village for most part of the night the sacrifice has to be carried out before midnight for it to effectively cleanse the villages before the new year begin so that is the a prominent belief finally the elders decide to said so they actually came to iman's hut and asked him to hand over ifada but he uh, didn't agree first jaguna and orog actually tries to speak to him um, in good terms but he never agrees so uh, they at set a trap for iman uh, they tried to catch iman but he ran away and finally this trap they know that he is thirsty and he will head for the river they dig a hole and cover it with the twigs sure enough iman goes to the river and falls into the trap ultimately fulfilling his destiny as a carrier even though he is in the strange land <clears throat> iman has portrayed as a type of christ because he is both a teacher and a healer and sacrifices his life to the insensitive village here the rejuvenation theme is coupled with the theme of sacrifice A noted critic Eldred Jones aptly compares Iman with Christ and he quotes towards the climax of the physical sacrifice his body flinches and he needs water Iman's pathetic appeal to the girl who betrays him parallels Christ's agonized cry I thirst Iman's death like Christ stuns the people in whose name it has to be demanded and quote So finally this iman goes to the river and falls into the trap ultimately fulfilling fulfilling his 
destiny. The sacrifice appears unavoidable as it is obligatory to conserve the existence of the community and of its attributes. Vole Soinka has justified the metaphysical link between the world of the living and of the dead and that of the unborn, unborn particularly found in the Yoruba cosmogony. At the same time, he delves deep into his Yoruba culture and denounces the absurdity of some traditional practices such as the ritual of human sacrifice. He thus uses the death as a means of salvation for the society, commenting on the establishment of ritual theatre. So, Sohinga says, I quote, Ritual theater, let it be recalled, establishes the spatial medium not merely as the physical area for stimulated events, but as a manageable contraction of the cosmic envelope within which man, no matter how deeply buried such a consciousness has latterly become, fearfully exist. And this attempt to manage the immensity of a spatial awareness makes every manifestation in ritual theater, a paradigm for the cosmic human condition. Unquote. This is from his uh, Soinga's work, Myth and Literature, where he has mentioned a little mo bit more about ritual theater. So, uh, there ends the play with the sacrifice of Iman. And you can actually read the play in detail in order to... This is a one-act play, very short play. And... Of course, used all the postmodern techniques and modernist techniques, especially the use of flashback and memory. And you can uh, read in detail to get the exact essence of the play. So, thank you. We'll, I'll be back with the characterization and the setting of the play in the next lecture. Stay tuned.